we want to uh, determine what the orbital velocity is of a star known as S02 or S2. And it orbits around Sagittarius A. And Sagittarius A is abbreviated sometimes like this. So what, what are we talking about here? Well, Sagittarius A is a supermassive black hole at the center of our Milky Way. So what this diagram shows is a sketch of the Milky Way galaxy with the supermassive black hole in the center and the Earth is out here. Now what we're going to do is take a close-up look of Sagittarius A star. Supermassive black hole with this star SO2 orbiting it. And what we want to do is find out how fast SO2 is moving when it's close to the supermassive black hole. And we want to find out what the velocity is when it's far away. So there are the two velocities we're going to look at. One close to the supermassive black hole and the second one far away from the supermassive black hole. And just to remind you, there's terms for these close points and far points. I think you're familiar with perihelion, meaning when the Earth is closest to the Sun, and aphelion, meaning when the Earth is fur furthest from the Sun. When you talk about stars, one of the terms that's used is periastron for close, and apostron for the far away. And another term that's used is periapsis for the close, and apoapsis for the far away, and that's with reference to the center of mass. But Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole, is so massive that the center of the mass of the system can be considered to be at the center of the mass of Sagittarius A. So we'll, we'll use these terms for describing periastron, closest point, and apastron, the furthest point. So we're going to take this picture here and we're going to look at it in a little more detail here. What we're showing now are those two distances, periastron and apastron. And the, the other parameters we're, we're not going to need. We just need those two distances here. Now, in, a, in a, another video titled Mass of Sagittarius A Star from SO2, S2 stars, orbital, orbital uh, parameters. And the orbital parameters, we, we, that was the title of a, another video. And the orbital parameters we used was the, the period for SO2 and its semi-major axis. And uh, I'm showing the semi-major axis here as being A equal to these two distances divided by 2. But uh, that's not going to be used here, but it was used to find the mass of Sagittarius A, and I'm just pointing out what that mass was because we're going to need to use it later. And that mass is very large. It's roughly 4 billion suns. Another number we're going to need is the uh, gravitational constant. So we'll need these numbers along with numbers uh, corresponding to those distances. And uh, those distances are this, the, the, the closest one is about 120 astronomical units in astronomical units, and the furthest one is about 1,800 astronomical units. So we need those numbers too, but those numbers, they'll be when you do the calculation, they'll be converted over to, to meters. We're not going to bother doing that now. So how do we find the velocity of SO2 when it's here and there? This is how we do it. If we come over here, what we're going to do is we're going to say that the total energy of MSO2 at periastron is equal to the total energy at apostron. All we're saying 
is energy is conserved. So one term will be the kinetic energy, so that's one half mv squared, and I'm indicating the velocity at the closest point, periastron, as v sub periastron. Then we have the uh, potential energy, and that's going to be a gravitational constant times the mass of SO2 and the mass of Sagittarius A divided by the periastron distance. And then the apostron, it'll be the same, but with the velocity at apostron and the distance at apostron. What's nice is the mass of SO2 cancels out, so we're left with this expression here. And what we want to solve for is either this velocity or this velocity, and we need another equation to do that. So what we'll use for the other equation is this angular momentum. Just as energy is conserved, the angular momentum is conserved. So you normally think of the angular momentum being MVR. And that's what we're showing down here. The angular momentum at periastron is going to equal the angular momentum at apostron. So we have the mass of the star times the velocity at the close point, distance at the close point, equal to the mass of the star, velocity at the far point, distance at the far point. And, it, and again, the mass of SO2 cancels out, so we're left with this expression here. And you can solve, you can solve this for the velocity at apostron, and that will be in terms then of the velocity at periastron. So you solve this equation for this V, and you substitute that in for here. So now you have a velocity for periastron here, and you have a velocity including periastron over here with some other factors. And you solve for the velocity at periastron, and that's equal to the square root of these terms, 2 times gravitational constant times the mass of Sagittarius A times the distance at the furthest distance to apostron over distance at apostron times distance at periastron uh, plus periastron uh, squared. And as we said earlier, the semi-major axis denoted by A is equal to the sum of those two distances divided by 2. So if you solve this for the sum, it'll be 2a. You substitute that in. We have a uh, Paris astron that we can factor out. So we have, we have this sum down here. Substitute in, and we'll have this. And so now you can find a velocity using these parameters that we, we showed over here. And the, the distance in astronomical units, the 1800, you convert that over to to meters, and this is what we find for the velocity. And the interesting thing about this velocity for periastron is that it, it's approximately uh, a few percent of the speed of light. And in fact, the number is about 2.4% times the speed of light c. We can also figure out since we have the velocity now at periastron, we can take that velocity, substitute it in here, solve for the velocity at the far point, apostron, and we will find uh, that velocity, in, and that velocity in, in meters per second is about 4.7 times 10 to the fifth meters per second, so that is approximately 0.16% times the speed of light. So there are the two velocities, and it's really remarkable that the star is moving when it's as close, at its closest point to the supermassive black hole. It's moving at a few percent times the speed of light. So that's how to calculate the velocities at these two points. Closest point, velocity 
of SO2 will be about 2.4% the speed of light. And at its far point, it'll be roughly 0.16% the speed of light. And that's how we estimated those velocities.